Stanton's Sheet Music is a retailer specializing in print music for schools, churches, private teachers, students, and professional musicians. Over the past 50 years, Stanton's has grown from a humble mom-and-pop storefront to their current status as one of the largest sheet music retailers in the country, remaining active in their local community as well as establishing a strong internet presence. Well, John Stanton started has affected a lot of people's lives. It's like I'm not necessarily running a company for myself as much as I'm running it for the customers and the employees. It was so much fun to come into work and realize it would mean something to a lot of different people in the sheet music business. Stanton Sheet Music has become a valuable and trusted resource for musicians because of their commitment to quality products and personal customer service, a commitment they continue to build upon. Born in 1923, John Stanton studied music education at The Ohio State University. His career as a band director led him to a job with Musical Arts, a full-line instrument retailer in Columbus, Ohio. Tasked with the duty of managing their small sheet music department, John soon felt confident that he could do better on his own. He leased 600 square feet within Coil Music Center, another Columbus retailer, and Stanton's Sheet Music was born. We were kind of back behind the office. It was a convenient location. We had good floor traffic. We carried strictly school materials, band methods and concert band, and we started to get into choral. We started in choral almost from the beginning. John was active in every aspect of his business, from working with customers on the sales floor to accounting and billing. With a small staff of only four employees, he couldn't afford to be just a manager. Two things initially set Stanton's sheet music apart from other stores. First, its knowledgeable staff and their ability to assess new materials and make high quality recommendations to teachers. And second, the extensive mailing lists John compiled. From about nine states, I got high school directories and created our own mailing list. I think they gave the enrollment of each junior and senior high and if I thought they had enough students that they'd have a band and a choir, I'd put them on the mailing list. After they get maybe three mailings from us, quite often we get a response, an order, or they try us out. In the early 1970s, while attending the Ohio Music Education Association conference, John Stanton had a brief conversation with former band director James Strauss. At the time, Jim was running the sheet music department at Coyles, Coincidentally, John's former position. They discussed some ins and outs of running their respective businesses, including offering discounts to school customers, something important to John that is still important to Stanton's today. So about three months later, I get a phone call one night. It's about uh, quarter of 11. I had uh, started to go to bed, and my wife said, uh, who was that phone call? I said, it's from John Stanton. You wouldn't believe it, but it's John Stanton. Well, what did he want? I said, I don't know. I said, uh, he just said, maybe we should have a meeting. So she said, so we can get a meeting? Yeah, I said, I'm going to talk with John uh, this next week. She said, what do you think it's going to be about? I said, I don't know. Maybe it's about the discount. I don't know. So when I met with John, uh, he told me, he said he'd looked around the country to find somebody to buy his business. He had started the business in 1960, and he decided he was going to do it for 15 years and get out never realizing that he really could do that. Uh, but as a result, he looked around the country to find people, and he says, I finally realized there was somebody right here in my backyard that might be interested to do that. So he asked me about this. And boy, I was taken back. Of course, I didn't have any money. I mean, I was just, I'd been out of teaching about seven or eight years, uh, and it was not one of those deals where you made a lot of money. Uh, so I, uh, I thought, I don't think I could afford to do that. But he seemed to think that maybe there would be a way. As usual, John Stanton found a way. The business was transferred to Jim Strauss in the mid-1970s, and his enthusiasm for the company was immediate. Jim's reputation with the band and choral directors he knew from Coils helped him to become a trusted resource at Stanton's as well. Under Jim's leadership, Stanton's continued to build a strong reputation as the source for sheet music. As his young children grew up, they too joined in on what was now truly a family business. Upon Jim's retirement, his son Eric 
and daughter Julia were the natural choices to take the reins from their father. By keeping the transition within the family, the younger generation was able to learn from Jim and continue the fine tradition he and John Stanton had established. He was never a type of person to check on me. Basically, it's always been uh, talking about ideas. So it wasn't necessarily that he would check up on things that I had done. It was an idea that we had talked about, and then all I was going to do was just go execute the idea and then tell him the results of, of how, how, how everything worked out. So I don't think that there were a lot of things that he was looking over my shoulder, and, and he's not that type of person. I think he's always prepared us for that time. I mean, I've been in the business now 24 years, and it was just grooming and preparing, and we still ask a lot of questions. We sit down at dinner time and we're very fortunate to have him still part of the Stantons. Uh, so he's not really quite fully retired, even though he says he is. Uh, he's still with the business, and we're very fortunate to have him because he's got a lot of knowledge that we're still learning. In August of 1960, John Stanton opened Stanton's Sheet Music within Coil Music Center in Columbus, Ohio. With only 600 square feet for his business, John stocked instrumental method books and choral music for area teachers. It quickly became apparent that a separate storefront location was necessary. 51 East State Street in Columbus was located between the Ohio Theater and the RKO Grand Theater, an ideal location for a blossoming music business. John quickly filled the former drugstore with music, focusing on the needs of local music teachers and directors. In the spring of 1970, Stanton's moved to 100 East Main Street. This two-story operation housed piano method books and teaching materials on the first floor and stacks and stacks of band, orchestra, and choral music on the second. The long, narrow store became a frequent weekend destination for music teachers from all over the state. By the late 1970s, the location at 100 East Main had become too small for the ever-growing inventory. With the addition of a toll-free phone number and a rapidly expanding mailing list, business was booming, and once again, Stanton's needed more space. Just three doors down on the same block, a small furniture store had vacated its location at 118 East Main Street. And soon, a caravan of music was making its way down the sidewalk as the staff pushed cart after cart to the new location. After four days of back-breaking work, the new location was opened in 1978. Double the size of the previous store, Stanton's continued to grow. With a final move to 330 South 4th Street, Stanton's was able to truly grow into a thriving retail store. Formerly a large grocery store, renovations were completed within two months, and the new location was open for business in December 1982. The current 4th Street location offers extensive sales floor space, as well as additional areas for in-store workshops and clinics. Throughout the years, being located in the heart of downtown Columbus has allowed customers from far and wide to visit the store, as well as take advantage of downtown venues for clinics and events. Early on, John Stanton understood the importance of reaching out to the local music community. In 1961, Stanton sponsored its very first reading session for choral directors in a nearby church. We rented the church basement and we brought in usually someone from Shawnee Press. They'd send us someone with a well-known name. Then it outgrew that space. We had to go out to Mace Hall at Capital University. And we get about 700 choir directors. School was in the morning, church was in the afternoon. We do 50 or 60 numbers that the staff and I had chosen. We'd go over them and rate them for school use, and the same thing for the church materials. We knew that reviewing new materials was always of interest to teachers and directors. Capital and Otterbein have been very helpful to us because they have facilities that are close and easy uh, to, uh, to use, and they've been very good. Again, if you're doing things for us, we're doing it for our customers, which are band directors, choir directors, and orchestra directors, and we find that the colleges are very interested in getting those people on their campuses for a lot of reasons. Um, so it's a very terrific marriage uh, to do that. The late 70s and early 80s were a time when the creation of workshops became a significant component of customer relations. 
in their evaluations of new products for teaching opportunities, engaging texts, musical techniques, and appealing melodies and harmonies, Stanton's staff put together new music workshops for choral, band, handbell, and classroom music teachers, many of which continue today. Stanton's also began attending conventions for the Ohio Music Education Association and many other professional organizations, strengthening affiliations with local colleges and presenting more workshops and clinics in the Columbus area. Bringing such clinicians as Bill Moffitt, Joyce Eilers, John Ness Beck, Ed Lajeski, and Roger Emerson to area events helped teachers to discover new music for their choirs and instrumental groups. Over the years, Stanton's has traveled the country, presenting at workshops and conventions from Nevada to New York, and many places in between, bringing their wide variety of music products and staff expertise to musicians everywhere. Implementing the Stanton's.com website in 1995 furthered the company's growth by including the Internet market. Through a number of website changes, and with the addition of a listening library website in 2007, and a digital download component in 2009, Stanton's presence on the web continues to grow. The inclusion of social networking provides even more opportunities for interaction and service to customers worldwide. Social networking is a very interesting thing that came around and it started with the idea of blogging. Blogging was becoming very popular and we thought that it would be a great way to do product reviews and talk to our customers directly, which was our goal. We've also started an active Facebook page where we can interact and talk with our customers. As much as we can develop our main website, the blogging and social networking has allowed us to put a personal face on the company itself and actually talk as musicians to other musicians. And we've been seeing a lot of positive response back to that. The customer-staff connection will continue to be the foundation for Stanton's success. We try to make our customers part of our friends and our family. We see our customers coming back and we, not only do we get to know what they want, we remember what they want, but we also get to know them personally. One of the things I think will set Stanton's apart in the future now that the internet is becoming so prominent for sheet music, when somebody finds a company like Stanton's, they're going to get away from some of those internet companies and talk to us. The staff is still going to be key to customer relationships. Stanton's is dedicated to seeking out new ways to establish and maintain customer relationships and to continue providing high-quality recommendations from a musically educated staff. These two elements that set John Stanton's store apart from the competition in 1960 are still a vital part of the way that Stanton's sheet music operates today in 2010 and into the next 50 years.